It tried to suck our bucket because this was so tight. Oh. Or it sucked all the air from the bucket into there. Oh yeah, not cold at all. That's interesting. Ooh, this one looks like little zucchini straws. Oh, the bottom one's still cold, though. Oh, there's a lot of ice in there. Yeah. I had a lot of moisture. So, when I was out cleaning the garden the other day, cleaning it all up, to my surprise, I found two huge watermelons still out there. Zucchini. No, oh, watermelons. two huge yes. watermelons. That's what this oh, is. right, right. And it's one of them anyway. And uh, then I also had three monster zucchini that I had previously harvested that just got away from me. So I grated all those up and I said, Todd, I definitely want some of this freeze dried. Because here's the thing. I am not a good meal planner. And when it comes time and you gotta, you know, thaw out your zucchini from the freezer to do something with, if we like this, I think that this might be my preserved way of food preser preserving grated zucchini. Normally you put it in like the quart size Ziploc bag. Yeah, two cups servings. And we freeze it. And yeah. so it ends up like this big chunk. Yep. And if you want zucchini bread, you have to thaw that out and wait for it to thaw. Yeah. So this could be a great way of freeze drying it. Yep, but it also makes really fun just little zucchini straws. <laughs> yeah, that, that didn't taste like anything. No, because it's a magic. I bet if you seasoned it, it would taste great. Just like a little snack. Mm -hmm. So the watermelons that we had, I cut them open and one of them was 80% ripe. We kept that one. The other one was still pretty white on the inside and it was all fibrous. So we just gave that one to the chickens. We did not extract the seeds from the watermelon. This was a seeded watermelon. And one of the warnings about freeze drying watermelon, while it's very good and very tasty, the seeds, all the moisture can never fully be extracted from the seeds. So these are not something that we can put in Mylar bags and keep them for five years or 10 years. Are you gonna try it? Okay. <laughs> Let's get to the point. How does it taste? So these will be snacks for us. Tastes just like, wow, that's bizarre. I almost said just like um, a Starburst. My like thought was watermelon starburst, but it has one more flavor texture to it that I can't quite figure out. I'm not talking texture, flavor. The first thing I thought of was watermelon Jolly Ranchers. Yeah, or watermelon flavored Hubba Bubba. Mm hmm. Very That's a much. Super, it's so sweet. It's sweeter than it was before yes. I put it in yes. the freeze dryer. Yes, the flavor extremely intensifies. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah, very cool. So we've been experimenting and playing around with our freeze dryer. Mm -hmm. Not back to back. We're not like those back to back people where they're just running cycles nonstop because we're trying to figure out kind of like what we like, and what we like and mm -hmm. how it fits like into our lifestyle. Yeah, because it seems to me there's kind of there's some different categories of why you freeze dry something. Um, and I'll tell you what I came up with. And if you can come up with any other ideas or subcategories, let me know what they are <laughs> <laughs> down in the comments, because I'm, I'm really curious. I've thought about this a lot. There's the aspect of freeze drying ingredients. So this zucchini, for example, is an ingredient that we can use for something else. Same with like the green peppers that we did the other day. Those are ingredients. And then there's things like snacks where I'm going to freeze dry Skittles or watermelon or strawberries or bananas. Ice cream sandwiches. People Ice cream too. sandwiches. <laughs> you know, all these things that are snacks. Not necessarily freeze drying it to store it long term or ever maybe never even rehydrate it. You're just it's a snack. You're going to snack on it from time to time. And then kind of the third category I came up with is like 
meals. Like I'm going to make a huge batch of spaghetti or lasagna and I'm going to portion it off. We're going to freeze dry it. We're going to put it in pouches. So that's kind of like a ready made meal. Mm-hmm. So those are kind of the three things that I came up with and we're trying to figure out that and I, I would add I would add a fourth already off the top of my head and that's a lot of people freeze dry for different use purposes. So taking tomatoes, turning them into tomato powder, mm-hmm. taking carrots, turning them into carrot powder, like powdering things, taking your chicken broth or your beef stock and turning it into bouillon. Um, so those would be other common uses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So in my head, I thought of that one. And I put it as a subcategory under ingredients. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so we think that um, I know one of my primary uses already will be things like this for the zucchini. Things that I want to readily be able to use, throw into dishes, but I don't want to go the hassle to um, have to thaw it and things like that. Mm-hmm. So do you want to like rehydrate some and see how it turns out? Uh, sure. Sure. I okay. mean, I, I'll tell you, I already know I do not like rehydrated blueberries. Do not. Oh, yeah, we tried that. Yeah. So let's take a piece of watermelon. Let's do watermelon on my plate since my plate's already watermelony and you can do zucchini on your plate. But we just have some warm water that we're adding to the plate. Oh, we're like, we're going to eat all that. <laughs> okay. Just enough to taste it. Yeah. And then I think you just let it sit for like five minutes. I think so. I might have to flip Ooh. these ones over. Yeah, see, I don't like how the texture and stuff gets smooshy, like slimy. Yeah. I just don't understand the purpose of it. Like, I don't really think anything freeze dried like this, whole ingredients, is meant to taste exactly the same. I don't know. I have not seen that yet. Like, oh, look at that. Yeah. (laughs) What is it doing? That's weird. It turns into like wet toilet paper. (laughs) (laughs) Let's let it do its thing. Okay. We'll come back in just a couple of minutes and. I think this might be ready already. This is like perfect, but we'll give this a few minutes and then we'll okay. bring you in close so you can actually see a little better what we're seeing and and we'll try to describe what we're feeling and but toilet paper. we'll describe how it tastes. <laughs> Turned kind of gelatinous Oh yeah, you can tell just by how it's hanging. Mm-hmm. So I think some things are gonna make better candidates for freeze drying than other things and the purpose to use them after the point. So I'm not knocking the art of freeze drying. I'm just acknowledging that not everything's going to be equal. Hmm. It still tastes really good. That's just the texture is a little, it's not watermelon anymore. Mm-hmm. It definitely has just exact, it's it's watermelon flavor, but it's not, doesn't taste like heating a watermelon. Did your piece have some of that like fibrous yeah. stuff inside mm-hmm. of it? So yeah. yeah, I think it it has some qualities, but not all. Yeah, I think it makes excellent candy and probably excellent in a smoothie or something like that. Like, oh yeah, yeah you can even good. like, if there was no seed, you could turn it into like watermelon powder. Yeah, and like, flavor drinks with it or yeah. other things, yeah. The zucchini looks almost exactly the way it did before we started this yeah. process. There's still a crunch. Mm. Now it tastes like zucchini It now. tastes like zucchini. So I think zucchini wins. <laughs> yeah. So what's next on the freeze drying agenda? Um, I was thinking about running some more of those green poppers through. Oh. Because we have like how many gallon bags down there do we have? Four one gallon bags. So yeah. One thing that I found is there's certain things you don't want to mix together in trays. And peppers and green peppers and things like that are definitely one of those things. If we would have put like watermelon in with green peppers, 
there can be some cross contamination of flavors there. Like your watermelon could end up tasting a little bit mm-hmm. like peppers. Okay. Yep. And right. then I think also like when you're doing a cycle, like water content, right? To do things that have similar water content. It may be good. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think we'll get a couple bags of those green peppers, get those run through. And then one of the things I really want to try is some of your broth downstairs, whether it's like your chicken broth or some of your turkey broth. You have a lot of broth down there, don't you? A bit. Mm -hmm. I want to try to turn some of that into powder because I sometimes in the morning they sell those like little powdered beef broth packets Mm -hmm. and you just take hot water and you pour it in and it makes broth. So I want to try to make our own, turn some of that into a powder and, and see how it turns out. Okay. What do you want to try next? Um, I want to do eggs, I think. Eggs? Yep, I want to try Are we eggs. getting a surplus bill back up again? Only a little bit, but we still have all those in the fridge that we're not going to be able to consume in time. So let's get those freeze dried. All right, cool. We'll run through the eggs and then when we do the broth, we'll do a video on that. And when we do the eggs, we'll do a video on that for you guys as well. Yeah. We'll keep taking you guys along with us. And honestly, we're going to be honest. At least I am. I don't know about you. I mean, I think we're both going to be honest. Like, does it work? Does it not work? And will we do use freeze drying as a preservation for technique for the things that we're drying? Mm-hmm. So um, I don't plan on not giving you an honest review. <laughs> yep. Just like the, the watermelon versus zucchini. Zucchini definitely wins. Yep for long-term storage for snacks that's good and that's bad (laughs) for rehydrating too and use purposes yes yep so a lot of things to factor and weigh in yeah so anyway if you guys have something tickling in your mind like "Mm, i'd really like to see how that works out let us know i don't know what else all right all right we'll see you guys on the next video bye guys Oh, like, so you know how you can't can pumpkin butter. So you can't can pumpkin butter like I can can peach butter. Can I freeze dry pumpkin butter and then just add a little, anytime I want some pumpkin butter, just get a little bit out and rehydrate it? I bet so.